And that was our friends, the Band of Brothers, and their number one selling hit, Draper the Pirate, available on iTunes, Amazon, and their site, Banjo Zone. But now, Air Wreck Radio is proud and delighted to have one of my friends on the phone. Former wild lady of comedy, former radio personality, Beth Donahue Weedman. Also known as Beth Damn Donahue. Beth Damn Donahue. People be like, Weedman, who the hell's that? (laughs) (laughs) My maiden name is Dan. Uh, just, okay, let's not let's not do the fake laugh every time I say something. Okay. Uh, no, we just giggle and ter- uh, incessantly a lot. That's pretty much what our show is. We're used to having just us to talk to. We got to do a lot of fake laughing. Yeah, <laughs> that's exactly what it is. Uh, just to catch everybody up, uh, Beth did about a year here in Rochester, uh, 18, 15, 18 years ago. Uh, uh, oh my God. Nights on uh, WCMF, the local classic rock station. And uh, I was an avid listener and call in, and uh, she was nice enough to invite me into the studio one day. Uh, Little Corey. Yeah, that was me. I was about uh, 13, 14 years old. Uh, oh, first God. Time, first time I stepped into a radio studio. Um, I now was, you're my age, and I'm 60. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the radio. People, you, could, you could go with 40, and everybody would be like, oh, yeah, no, she sounds 40 or less. Absolutely. She could totally pass for it in her pictures. Oh, shut up. I, I don't have to. You can't make me. Yeah, we're not past the ass kissing portion of this program yet. <laughs> You're not my boss. <laughs> All right, so just ask me anything except how did you get started doing comedy? Otherwise, I'm hanging up. No, I would never ask you such a horrible <laughs> question. <laughs> That's my partner's job. No. Uh, yeah, as soon as you want to get rid of me, just ask me that. Click. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> did uh. Who was what was your boss's name? Just a first name. I can't think of it. Harry. You, Harry. That's what it was. I couldn't I was yeah. trying to think of it the other day. You worked for Harry at CMF. That's right. Ugh. Uh, I you know, it was it'll sound really sour grapes, but I just had no idea the level of sleaze that is in radio, you know, and there they they really? said, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, move up here and we're going to pay you uh, X number of dollars. And I'm like, great. So I move up there and they're like, by the way, um, we're, we're not going to be able to do that money. Uh, we're going to need to like cut it in half. What do you want to do? And I'm up there with all my huh. shit. And I'm <laughs> like, oh, this is great. That's a little too late to turn and, um, and then when I got fired unceremoniously. Um, yeah, one day you were they, just gone. Uh, yeah, that when they fire you in radio, it, they it, it's like the next day there's no mention of you, no trace of you. Everything is gone from the website that ever had, unless it's pictures that they really like that don't have you in it. Yes. And uh, <laughs> it was it was horrible, man. It was just horrible. I mean, you know, they just lie and lie and lie and lie and lie, and uh, you know. But what are you gonna do? You know. Was CMF uh, your only job in radio? Your first job? Your last? No, job? no. The first one was in Nashville, and uh, you know, I didn't know what I was doing. I was a comedian, and then all of a sudden, I've got somebody every day telling me exactly what I have to say, and it's like I can't do that, you know. And they're like, "Oh, sure you can, sure you can." So. um so I did the best I could, but like, you know, like, like I have Richard fucking Simmons in the studio. Okay. <laughs> Huge thousand people in the parking lot. Just, I mean, I know it sounds crazy, but at the time, for whatever reason, it was a madhouse. We only had him for like 20 minutes. And I have to stop twice and do the weather for five minutes. Oh, and I'm like, no, sucks. I'm not doing it. I fucking hate that. And the then, you know, I'd get ass raped after, you know, the show. And this happened every single day. And finally they just said, you, you got to go. And, you know, so it was just stupid stuff that I just wouldn't do. The day Princess Diana died, I was in Rochester. And Harry's like, don't fucking mention it don't you mention it i'm like are you crazy and of course i mentioned it you know so it was just it's just really hard to uh you know play by the rules in radio because they're really dumb i know and they're always they're they're besides dumb they're scared they're pussies uh 
And I, I, I well, yeah, I feel a lot and, of it, and it's like you know, can I mean, it's different in Rochester because CMS and you know, they're such icons. But in most cities, like in Nashville, I can't. I I know the name of one DJ. I couldn't tell you the name of anybody else. You know, because everybody sounds the same, and you know, and nobody's interesting because they're not allowed to be. So it's like they want you to be really popular, but they don't give you the opportunity to get popular because you have to sound like everybody else. I will. So I wish, it's. I always really found that stupid. in Rochester that we do get a lot of great personality through the radio stations here, but you're never going to get anywhere in Rochester. So as soon as they realize they have any talent, they leave. Radio is all <laughs> except for well, music. and I and I don't. Yeah, I know. I, I don't. I don't. You know. I mean, there's only you know. I I have no idea the whole Tommy Wee's bill. I don't know how that shook out ratings. I never cared about ratings. I was going to ask interested you. Interested in it? I I just hope that those two guys are still friends. I know they they came to Nashville a couple years ago for some convention and hadn't talked since the breakup. And I I made them get into a room together or, or a bar in this case I'm Future sorry there's a train in, in my bag. backyard <laughs> and they were really cool with each other and they probably never talked again after that I don't know but was, you know I was going to ask your opinion did you how genuine you thought it was and how much did you think it was a radio a radio war for ratings what are, what are we talking about uh, Louise and Tommy Louise split. and Tommy uh, in their their tiff their lovers quarrels because it's great radio it's very entertaining i don't know to listen to. i don't know any honest to god Corey. i don't know anything about it i i i don't know what happened i don't you know i know that it was basically you know howard stern and robin quivers yeah. you know <laughs> and, and it was like you know tommy's like you can have your own show or you can i guess i guess that's what happened you know, and Tommy's like, "Well, I'm gonna stay and and drive the ship for a while." And oh, fuck yeah. And I I don't know. I haven't I haven't listened to radio. God, you know. Sometimes if my husband and I go on a trip, we try to find these swap and shop shows. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, that's the best radio out there. The AM swap and shop. I'm not familiar. Oh, oh my God, people they... just call up and they're like. Yeah, I got two goats and a oh, yeah. sander, <laughs> that <is awesome>. and, <laughs> and here's here's my phone number. And one lady, one lady calls up and she goes, "This is for whoever took my purse at the Walmart." She goes, "You can have the money. I just want my purse back. And since you know where I live, just come over and throw it in the yard." And it's like it's just that's it doesn't a, get any better than that. That's it just a Dolce Gavucci, and I paid. Thirteen dollars for it. I need that back. Thank oh, you. That's awesome. I love that. That is great. Public public swap shop radio. That is a great it's way to. Best. That is the cheapest way to fill airwaves that has ever been invented. Whoever is the program director that came up with that idea was just awarded with lavish luxuries of middle grade offices and shitty pay. I know what I'm doing. With <laughs> I know it's show. it's like it's like hillbilly Craigslist. <laughs> I mean, just bad grammar, bad English. Turn your radio down. I mean, it's just, just, it's just gold. It's just all gold. Oh yeah, I love we it. We tape it. Hearing we that. tape it on my husband's cassette player to listen to on the weekend. Oh, you're now going to hear some of it on Air Rack Radio yeah, next week. <laughs> That's going to be our band next week. Is, is that show? Uh, the station that that we've got here in Nashville is called, I think it's W M A K, in Spring Hill, Tennessee. So I don't know if they do internet radio or I don't know if you can just dial it up and hear it. But oh, you can find any radio It's station. on from like 12.15 to 1, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, that Monday is totally happening. Yeah, you can find you can yeah. find any radio station on the internet now. <laughs> that was your plug for this interview. That's <laughs> so you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you know, I don't understand. I don't even know what I'm doing right now. I, I, got, I dropped out of technology for like 10 years. And I don't know what a podcast is. I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to find it. I don't know what. Right now, I'm, I'm well. You know, I'm about to blow my brains out trying to buy a fucking tablet. <laughs> oh, I know. Four G, three G, or Wi Fi, uh, no. and you and you keep gotta asking buy a on, thing, and you keep asking on Facebook, and retards keep giving you advice. <laughs> I know, and I've asked. I mean, I've got you know what five thousand fake friends, and not one person said. 
there's two things, Wi-Fi or they told and they're like, yeah, I did. Remember I said, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, that didn't make any sense to me. You have to talk to me like I'm mildly retarded or you need four the years one, old. You need the one that works like your cell phone. That's the one you need. You go and ask the except, sales guy for the one that works like your cell phone. Right. Except that that's another 30 or $40 a month oh, unless yeah. yes. you know how to do the secret tether thing which I will never know how to do in my life. And as a guy, so who it's could... like, I, I just can't think of that many situations where I'm, I'm going to have to be looking at my tablet and I'm going to have to have internet connection or I'm not somewhere with a hot spot or whatever the fuck you call it. <laughs> you know, the only reason we need it is because we're moving to Los Angeles and I want to be able to drive around and hit, you know, uh, Zillow and show me all the houses for rent in this neighborhood. Boom, go. So the fact that we'll have to do it before we leave the hotel, <laughs> it, that'll save us $3,000. I'm just going to have to be inconvenienced. You know, yeah. I really, really am wondering where there's a Taco Bell. You know, you're around some of the greatest Spanish food in the country. Yeah, I know. Thank but you. I really want a Taco <laughs> Bell. <laughs> I can find that out on my, on my fucking Blackberry, you know. By the way, you are the last person. With a Blackberry. Now. I know. <laughs> I know. Not only that, I can't wait for the new one. That helps explain why you're confused about the tablets. That definitely <laughs> That definitely does it. I just I'm just a ho See, first of all, you little fuckers. <laughs> I've had a computer so long. I got my first name as my AOL name, okay? Oh no shit. <laughs> Is Beth that at AOL? Beth D at AOL.com. Oh, my right. God. Good for you. So, so Mac was still was waiting for somebody to dust it off in the garage when I got on board. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just windows wired. And, I ha and my husband has oh, a Mac. Too. I hate it. I know it's the easiest thing in the world, except when I sit down to do it. And then it won't do anything. Well, I and I hate it. I've tried and the iPhone, I just, I need that fucking keyboard, man. I, I need love it. my iPhone. I love my iPhone. I couldn't live without it. Everybody loves their iPhone. Yeah, I, I, I know. Have, uh... But I'm going to be dead in 20 years, so just let me have my fucking Blackberry. <laughs> All right. All right, fine. <laughs> fine. Since you put it so convincingly. <laughs> You know, I mean, I'm not arguing that it's better. I'm just saying I'm just, it works I for you. just don't have what it takes. I'm already puking trying to learn Android. I can't find anything. I don't know why, why I have to make a special request to get an icon on my desktop. I don't know who gets the request or who approves them because they never show up on my desktop. That's why you needed an iPhone. They're way easier than Androids. That's, no, that's I don't retarded. want an iPhone. I want a tablet. Or what, the want an iPad. iPad. <laughs> I don't want an iTab. Yeah. And I don't know why they're making these tablets. Now everybody's saying, oh, get the note. You can write on it. If I wanted to write, I wouldn't have a fucking computer. <laughs> I hate writing. <laughs> I like that. Uh, yeah, they already invented that. It was called paper. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Paper's heavy, though. Yeah, you can write on it. So you is that giant $200 phone. Pen. I didn't even ask you if I'm allowed to cuss on here or not. Yeah, you Absolutely did. not. We you been, asked us earlier. Out of, uh, what, what's that thing called that we don't use? If we were actually Delay. a real radio show, it would be out of dump. But no, we, well, thank uh, God. we're on the internet, so I don't give a fuck what you say. Yeah, no, And you, you can you can send me the link to this thing, but if i got to download some bullshit program, no. I'm going to kill you because no. my computer's getting ready to explode anyway. No, just, when I send you the link, you just push the triangle button that means play in every country on Earth, and uh, you will hear our lovely voices coming to you through the interwebs. Well, I will certainly, you know, Facebook it and tweet it and the other five things I know how to do. Well, thank that's, you. That's two more things than I know how to do, so all right. <laughs> <laughs> He's um. This guy over here doesn't even know what a Twitter is. I don't uh, understand it. Oh, oh yeah. wow. Yeah. You know, I, don't, I know a lot of Twitter-resistant people. All it really is is instant news. I mean, somebody Facebooks, oh, the princess had her baby today. Okay, I already knew, yeah. you know, how far apart her contractions were three days ago. Right. Yeah, I saw you know, the... Twitter's just instant. 
I saw the Geraldo Rivera uh, selfie pic oh, in the mirror. Oh, my God. Oh, no, wait. Days what? before anybody else said it on the news or anything. What happened? Oh, God. Talk about something I can never unsee. <laughs> Did he finally that find Nazi gold? That is a post-op gold? tummy tuck if I've ever <laughs> seen one, and I've seen plenty. I'll send you the picture, and, brother. He did, apparently, my partner hasn't seen it. I haven't seen that. I'll, uh, I'll send you the oh. picture of a 60-some-odd-year-old Geraldo Rivera uh, shirtless and pantless in the shower doing a selfie. I can't imagine why I would want to see that. <laughs> the best part is the red glasses. Yes, what is that? He's got uh, red, round, like, Beatles you sunglasses. You watching a 3D movie somewhere? That's my favorite color for glasses. You, you won me. I, I definitely need to see this picture. <laughs> I'll, I'll, oh, it's horrible. I'll link it Can to I, you. I'd like to take us back to something you said earlier, uh, if it's all right with you. Well, uh, Absolutely. Was Richard Simmons cool? He is the Way most back. fabulous. Yeah. I mean, and it's not just me, hey, you know, hey, being a, uh, you know, a hag. It's <laughs> he, he comes not in Beth. at 100 miles an hour. You have absolutely no control. You asking him questions. I don't know how they do it on TV when he'll, you know, when he gets to where he's crying and stuff. But yeah, he's he really comes intense. in at a hundred miles an hour, and it's it's like nothing I've ever experienced. Best guest, hands down, anywhere yeah. ever. Anywhere ever. That's a ever. that's a big shoe to fit, but I believe it. There's I a lot of energy. It. Well, there. oh, in a minute, in I my, take him. In, in my experience. Yeah, fair it enough. was uh, it, it was unbelievable, and you know I'm not a huge Richard Simmons fan, but that guy earns every penny he makes. I like him because he seems genuine to me. Yeah, he, I bet he's that guy when he like gets up and goes to the bathroom in the morning. I bet he's the exactly. same person. Is there somebody I can help on the way? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so why so did you get out of like in America's Got Talent? And do you believe how? Howard Stern is this completely different person on this show. I don't watch television, but if there was a reason oh. to watch TV, it's because you told me Stern is not Stern on TV. I have to know this. What's he on on TV? He's, he's on, not. Oh. He's like Deepak Chopra or something. He's on America's Got Talent. He's one of the judges. Yes. Oh, all right. Yes. I would and love, a guy I'd love on to hear there. Howie you, be like. Have you not seen the special head link? No. no. Look up uh, America's Got Talent special head and look <laughs> at the levitation thing that he did a couple of weeks ago. And it just blew my mind. It, that He's absolutely my favorite. When we went to L.A. last weekend, I was on Santa Monica Pier trying to find him. And turns out he was taping in New York or something. But special head levitation from America's Got Talent. I guarantee you, you will freak the fuck out. I mean, of course it's a trick. I don't know how he does it. I don't care. It'll blow your mind. Uh, my, uh, I'm watching it right now. Yeah. <laughs> so my partner's looking yeah, it up. It, Someday, if I keep having great guests like the great Beth Donahue, I might actually have a producer to do it for us. <laughs> no, no, no. you got to watch this and, and let it build. There's a build, like 30 seconds. All right. And you're like, what is it? Talk to me. What are you seeing? What are you seeing? An ad. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> is the, is the guy the even stage. on stage yet? Yeah, he Give just us a play by play, Murph. Uh, he's saying hello, and how he is. Is Howie a cancer uh, patient? Mandel? Yeah. No, he just shaved his hair because he's an uh, OCD crazy guy. No, he's 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 yeah, he's got OCD. Can't touch anybody. I've heard fist that. pumping or whatever that thing's called, mm -hmm. knuckle punching or the bump. You wouldn't expect that from Bobby's world. <laughs> Talk to me, Stacy. Talk to me. They're they're talking to him. How he's talking. All right, now he's just sitting down. He's got his stick and his uh, his like that dress thing that they wear there, wherever he's from. Oh, I heard O and A right. talk about this guy. Uh, he's banging on a bell. <laughs> Is that our right? Hall? Right. I can hear it. I can hear it. It's <laughs> picking up in your mic. He's doing some kind of crazy chant. Yeah, yeah, the yeah. The audience looks confused. The audience yeah. is rightfully confused. I'm confused, and I'm sitting here past tense. He, yep. just, he stood up. He's doing some breathing exercise with his stick. Some of these people okay. look disgusted. Right. The buzzer rang, and nothing happened. That just meant his one of them voted no. face is ridiculous. The face that he's making is absurd. Yeah. He's doing some yes. kind of 
bass breathing thing and people are like exit him out hardcore and holy shit he just fucking levitated <laughs> i know what the i know fuck? do you even believe that i do i absolutely believe that that's actually happening it, it, he i mean that, isn't that isn't that just fucking awesome that's fucking insane <laughs> this guy is yeah it's insane up. He's like holding himself up, one-handed, off to the side, sitting Indian style. I know, and it's stick. like I don't, I don't care what the trick is. It's amazing. I don't care how the hell he fooled us. That is awesome, and I want to pay him to watch it again. The crowd is going wild. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty yeah, cool. It's, yeah, it's crazy. I like the comeback too. Everyone's xing him out because he's crap, and then wow, he just awesome. jumped up into the air right. and like levitated. <laughs> it's a fucking right. That was cool. Thanks for introducing me to that. <laughs> so, no problem. Why aren't you in showbiz anymore there, Beth? I am not in show business because I could not, after about 10 years of comedy and radio, I could not uh, stop eating painkillers by the plane load. All right. Yeah, and all right. Uh, just, just really horrible, 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 horrible addiction. And, uh, uh, Stacy's looking finally, to be confused. What? Go ahead. I saw a guy levitate. Uh, <laughs> radio, radio people classically have back problems from all their sitting. Oh. And they have a tendency to eat Oxycontins because of it. <laughs> uh, you know what? I never got to Oxys. I was, I was Lortab. Oh, you were Lortab. And, um, okay. I think you were before the time I, of the Oxy, though. I've been on the emergency room tour of the United States. Canada, Mexico, trust me. I've been to every ER in this country. And uh, anyway, I couldn't stop, and I finally got hip to something called Suboxone, yep. which is a little strip. You put it under your tongue and zero cravings. And there's a whole camp of people that say, oh, you're not clean. Well, all I know is I needed 25 Lortabs. And I take Jesus. a half of a little milligram of a strip every day, and I haven't had a pain pill in three years. Good for you, honey. So good for you, yeah. honey. Yeah. Well, it's not anything I'm doing. It's it's a miracle drug for me because I couldn't. And right about that time is when I met my husband, the most awesome guy on the planet, and I was like, and he came on the road with me for about a year, and we had a blast, and then we got married, and. I'm like I'm not I'm not going out of town anymore. What and does, we've been married like what, seven years, and he's I still cry every day that he's so cool and he married me. What does Robert do? Robert, besides being able to, um, if you can answer, if has, you can, I understand. Besides being no, able to no, handle no, you, no, 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 he has an awesome lineage. His um, this will you won't remember this, but his father was a very famous criminal defense attorney in L.A. who successfully defended Claudine Langer when she um, killed Spider Savage. She also um, defended Squeaky Fromm um, from the Mansons. The, the old mob days. Yeah, and then his grandfather on his mother's side was the governor of California um, in the late 50s or 60s, Goodwin Knight. Sweet. And so then his other set of grandparents, his grandfather, Johnny Bond, the, was a famous country and western songwriter who was Gene Autry's guitar player forever. And so we have a catalog of very old country and western songs that we run this business licensing thing so people can play the songs wherever. But that wasn't enough to pay the bill, so he got a job at a financial place and it's boring but it pays the bills and has insurance no, that, and that, i that's am a worth cashier gold. at, at uh, a grocery store at a grocery store mm-hmm <laughs> i so make eight dollars an hour nice Ballin'. yeah buddy <laughs> and i so and we, i used to make 500 an hour yeah so we we took a former performer um and a professional smart ass we took her and we wedged her into a customer-based service position. I bet that's fun. Yeah. That's got to be <laughs> my, fun. I want to make a reality show just about that. Dude, people <laughs> are just, 
We've got the guy who we can't scan any of his stuff. We have to put them all in by hand because he knows the scanner is hooked into outer space. <laughs> and These days, the people he might be that right. none of their food can touch the other food. Every item has to be in its own bag. You don't even want to know uh, the craziness I, of the grocery store <laughs> reality. I, uh, I've i never known uh, Beth to be um, quiet or bashful. So I can't believe when stupid shows up that uh, Beth doesn't call it. I don't <laughs> That is called learning with age. Yeah. <laughs> and and also, all these old people that are so stupid and slow, I'm turning into one. And I have a tremendous amount of empathy. So uh, I've managed my to curb my tongue. And when I can't stand it anymore, I'll just go do a show there you somewhere. Go. There you go. Fuck it, I'm taking a month off. <laughs> <laughs> so I do like three or four shows a year. Nice. And that's it. And everybody's like, why don't you come to Rochester? Because as far as I know... Why would you? There's, we've got one Joe comedy T club. Joe runs the club out of his tattoo shop and no, we got a different to pay club you now. in ink or some shit. we got huh. a different club now. It's uh, uh, <laughs> there's, what? there's a club out in Trust Webster. Me. Joe T's in it somewhere. Oh, I'm sure he is. It's fucking Joe T. And I, they tell you they'll pay you this, and then payday comes, and it's like, oh, we had to pay for the room, and 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 we didn't make any money, and it's like, really? Why why did you beg me to come here for two years? Yeah, and then and nobody, it was sold out every night, but you didn't make any money. It was sold out every night and pushed on local radio for a week, because especially right. when and, you came and here, fifteen dollars for a beer. Yeah, especially when yeah. you came here, the biggest name in radio talked about it for a week in the area, and so you you didn't make any money. Bullshit. They, they they didn't make any money. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sure. And what are you gonna do? You got to play catch the next that's year. That's why. You know. That's why in my lifetime I went to the cafe twice and stopped going because I'm not paying eight dollars a beer and know that you're robbing all the comics. Oh, you got to pay for that sitting. I'm gonna have uh, that empty list cup there. The no cup they do. What he needed to pay for was his club in the Bahamas so he could move to the Bahamas. No, what I paid oh, for was God. the bottomless cup. What's his name from the Cam's Cafe? JJ moved to the Bahamas. Oh God, him! Or Aruba. He's still or alive. Yeah, he's in the Bahamas, Aruba, oh. or something. He was when oh, he went wow, to the Bahamas. Good. <laughs> so, wow, I wish you could see the girl that's um, jogging by my house right now. Me too. She's doing it sideways. Isn't this exactly what I've never seen what anything for? like that? She's <laughs> jogging sideways. Yep. Girl jogging side. She's like, hold on, let me get my phone. I. <laughs> So how did you... Or my tab, yeah. <laughs> or your so tablet. Hold on, I gotta figure out how to work this fucking camera. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know, I like the Twin Towers. I'm like, I can't figure it out in time. Well, it was on for three days. I'm sorry, I can't figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> I still couldn't find the camera button. So how does how does Robert deal with you? Well, why don't you ask him? I would love to. Darling? Yes. All right, I'm going to put you on speakerphone. Okay. The boys would like to speak with you. Fantastic. Am I on speaker? Yes. Hey, this is Robert. Hi, Hello, Robert. Robert. This is Corey. This is Stacy from Air Rec Radio. We're happy that you let us talk to Beth, and we're happy to talk to you. Well, I'm 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 happy to be uh, I'm happy to be with you. I'm I'm so glad that uh, you were able to uh, spend some time with my beautiful bride of uh, six years now. Very it nice. Six, years. Oh. Six, okay, we're into our six years together. All right, beautiful. How did you we guys... actually met? First time we met was through MySpace. Remember MySpace? Yes. Yeah, sure and then do. we actually first time we met was at uh, Zany's Comedy Club, and Beth's like, "No, I really don't want you to meet meet here, but I got a show, but I want to meet you." And uh, we haven't stopped uh, since. Oh, you met her at a show? Did you Did you watch the show? I watched the show and uh, I couldn't wait uh, for her set to get over so we could continue to talk, but I was enjoying it so much. It was actually the first time I'd ever seen her perform. And then she took me backstage. Oh, that must have been cool was, for you. Yes, I was very impressed. And we spent an hour talking and uh, it was great. That's uh, That sounds pretty cool. That man. was literally <laughs> the question I was in the middle of asking. Uh, wow. Yeah, so well, I know. I should, I should actually let you ask. Ask no, me questions no, we're or, bad at this. I, it's cool. 
That's yeah. fine. No, we like we prefer when other people do the interviews for us. It's less hard work for us. Yeah, it's a lot easier when the when the guest just talks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys could just kind of uh, you know maybe run a few errands and I could just chat and. You know, how, it, however you want to do it. It wouldn't be the first time one of our guests ran a little bit long on a story and we went for a run to the refrigerator. <laughs> uh, yeah, you, I'm sure you've got that time just right. <laughs> well, that's one of the that's one of the perks of being a podcast. Yeah, our uh, fridge is really close. Our to the fridge table. is right there because it's my studio. I built it. We'll do what we'd like. Yeah, you have podcast perks. Exactly. That's, That's exactly that, and we don't have any bosses or FCC, and we can talk to anybody we'd like about whatever we'd like. Yeah, there's no getting fired here. Wow. So I hear. Oh, you, that's awesome. I hear you have a long, proud lineage. I do have a yeah. I guess, yeah. I guess I I do have a, a proud lineage. Actually, that's a word I did not expect to use today. I uh, <laughs> I was uh, listening to Beth. Don't describe. even ask me to how to spell that. I have no idea. But well, that makes two of us, so that's not. <laughs> that's not that big a sin. I uh, I was as Beth was telling me the story a little bit of it. I was thinking, oh, my daddy was a tin knocker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you my, said a tin knocker? Yeah, my grandfather was an immigrant. I don't know. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> wow, makes me want to do my bad Johnny Carson impression. Well, please feel free. Especially, I didn't even never stop I'm wearing a flipper now because I've been having some dental work done. So. I kind of lisp a little bit. I got a little Cindy Brady twist going. A little bit of a Cindy Brady lisp. But I, I was going to do my bad Johnny Carson. That was a, you know, I do a bad Johnny Carson because that was not normal. You know what? That's and that was a... that terrible. I actually do. I actually, what I do is I do impressions of friends, friends impressions. It's not bad for over the like speakerphone. Yeah, that's, that's it's right. Sounding, but it's I'm sorry. Really good actually, on the phone. I've, had, I've also had a little coffee. A little after work coffee, so I'm like a little. I'm running a little faster than I usually do. Uh, vodka. <laughs> the after work coffee. <laughs> yeah, we were. I mean, you were actually. We're, I maybe want to get back to the lineage. Oh, yeah. Please do. Feel free. Uh, uh, Beth filled me out on some of the interesting points. Um, uh, uh, po- political history and a musical history. Is there any other points you have to offer? Yeah, it, it, it's amazing what. You know, after after my dad got divorced, I well before the divorce, my my of course my biological mother, uh, uh, Carolyn Knight, her father was my grandfather, uh, Governor Goodwin Knight, who was governor of California from 1954 to 1958, and um, his kind of what I'm very proud of is he actually was there with Walt Disney the the day of the opening of Disneyland. Oh, and my cool. grandfather got to speak at Disneyland. In fact, they released that on DVD. They did a television broadcast, and actually, I finally got to hear my grandfather actually talking um, at the opening day of Disneyland. Oh, here comes Beth. She's walking in. And oh. and my my uh, husband's grandfather, Goodwin Knight, and Walt Disney exchanged letters, and there were thousands of dollars, and we can't find them. Oh, a, a, yeah, along with your Stephen King letter. Yes, I have a handwritten letter. Yeah, to handwritten King. letter to Stephen King. And that's from part of, Stephen from Stephen King before he became like Stephen King. Oh no shit, that's uh, that's yeah. A, so, um, that's an so yeah, that you know, it was really the first time I got to hear my grandfather speak was on that that DVD. So that was a proud moment. I just and then a, my dad uh, um, remarried, divorced my my biological mother. And uh, married uh, Sherry Bond, and her father was uh, Johnny Bond, who was my step grandfather, who was very popular in country music. He sang Ten Little Bottles" and "Hot Rod Lincoln," and he's actually a member of the Country Music Hall of Fame. Really? So in Nashville, so it's fun to uh, go to the Hall of Fame and see his plaque. It's very still. Yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. not a whole lot of action. Yeah, <laughs> so you see just a pl- kind of a bronze plaque of my. My uh, grandfather, Johnny Bond. So, yeah, there's been kind of some fun lineage there. You know, it's amazing when your parents are born, you just don't know what you're going to get. Yeah, that's, uh, well, yeah, it's a, it's, it's another uh, inclination of small world situation. It is, and it, right, know. it is, yeah, it is, it, yeah, it is a small world, especially with Facebook. It's even, it's even gotten smaller. Oh, yeah, absolutely, because now it's a small global world. Yeah. It is a small global world, but now I'm running into people that are my, they started off as Facebook friends 
And then I meet them and it's kind of reverse. We really don't have much to talk about because I already know what's going on. So it's, very, it's a very strange conversation. <laughs> like, so you were at your aunt's house swimming this weekend. That's, that's cool. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I think it's awesome. You had Beth on the show and when, uh, when can we hear this, uh, this podcast? Uh, this, the podcast will be uh, available uh, first thing Wednesday morning. I post them at 1201. And what I'll do is I'll drop a link right on Beth's Facebook. Oh, that is so awesome. And then she can just click the link, click the play button, and you'll hear this our wonderful show. You guys will be uh, towards the ass end of the show because we're smart enough to put our interviews on the bottom of the show. We want our part. We only want our part? Is that what it is? No, we'll get the whole show. I can't post fucking, you know. Oh, Beth I is will, requesting just our part. I can also <laughs> yeah, send you a slate. I'll send you isolated <laughs> audio of just you guys' part. We're going to send you the whole show without this. Oh, that, oh that's amazing. We're going to edit this right out. Well, you know, the, the one thing I will say, just, you know, there's so many things to say, but I'm not going to say them all. But, uh, you know, seeing Beth and, and, and dating Beth, I had a chance to go on the road with her early on. And she did a tour with uh, Ed M.A. and the Southern Fried Chicks, which yes. was a little limiting because Beth couldn't really, like, do her whole Beth damn Donahue shtick. But it was... Yeah, she had to be clean, but it was amazing to go to all these theaters, really, literally all over the country, and see her perform. And it was uh, uh, an amazing experience to see her doing the meet and greets. And it was, um, it, it was that was a real great opportunity to to see her uh, just early on in our, in our dating. And I've seen her live many, many times. And uh, she doesn't do as many shows as she used to, but it's amazing how many people still see her and remember her from the radio days and uh she is definitely amazing to be married to because we just laugh every night and it's like being at beth donahue show every night uh, because of beth donahue inviting a chubby little 13 year old boy into a radio studio for the first time a uh wow yeah beth was telling me a little bit of background about that that's, yeah that's amazing that uh, all these years later you still remember her and uh, and, uh, that I was that was a big cool. moment in my life. It's inspired me to do a lot of things since then, including this show oh, right here. Thank you. So, I'll end in close. Why not? We got a friend story. I got to. I've got to have her out to tell you one thing, and okay. then we got to eat because we're starving to death. Well, I was just go. gonna wrap with you guys, but to let me know what you want to to tell me, and then we'll wrap it up. Well, just, I think this is so funny, and it doesn't have a punchline because it's a story. But it just Anecdotes don't need punchlines. You know when you go to a concert and there's always one drunk guy just bad timing, yelling stupid shit? Yes. Yes. Okay. So Robert goes to see James Taylor many years How ago. It's a beautiful outdoor theater. Super quiet. James Taylor and his guitar, you know, and I'll give him the phone. Well, just in a nutshell, is it the Starwood Amphitheater here in Nashville. And uh, right at the moment, you know, James Taylor's doing you know, all his classic songs and and it's, you know, nice and quiet, you know, because James is talking. And right in the middle of it, some guy just stands up and goes, you've got a friend. Right oh, at that moment. Thank, like, <laughs> thank you so much yeah. for picking that song. <laughs> yeah, right. And James is like, look, we're going to Don't worry. I'm going to get the, to that song. And he does another song to Sweet Baby Jane. And the guy stands up again right at the perfect moments of silence. You've got a friend! <laughs> you know, why, reconstruct, why is the, there's that one guy every show? It's me. Well, I call that concert tension. And just expect it when you go oh. to a concert. Oh, yeah, because they want to be part of the show nowadays. They can't be happy sitting watching the show. They have to be part of the show now. Be part of the show. You've got a friend! But you have 10,000 yeah. other people who think you're an asshole. Sit down. Uh, you gotta sit right, down exactly. Sit Every show. concert. I mean, <laughs> the whole I mean, the whole concert experience has changed so much. I mean, just, you know, there's no more, you know, it's all just no surprises. no surprises. There's always previews on YouTube. So when I see a show, I don't go, I don't want to watch YouTube. I don't want to take pictures. I just want to even try to enjoy the show. I just want to, yeah, I want to watch a show and not be through the screen of something else that I'm holding. Exactly. <laughs> Well, so we're. I guess we're gonna wrap. I guess we're gonna wrap it up. But we're. Yeah, I'm gonna give it back to Beth Donnie. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of the show. I'm so excited. I'm super happy uh, to have you, you Robert. Thank you so Beth much. And, and me uh, to guest guest star on the show. I'm and happy I wish, to have you. Guys. I wish and it's not normal. And I wish you all the best of luck on your <laughs> podcast. It's very very exciting. Thank you. And we will promote it, and we will put it on that 
Facebook page. All right. right. Thank you, Robert. Thank you very much for talking to us. All right, guys. Thank you, well, Becky. I owe I you told one. I wouldn't have anything to say. Except for 45 minutes of one of the best interviews we've ever done. Thank you. I'm so sure. Much. I thank you I'm so sure, much. I'm sure, yeah. This. There'll be a lot of awards coming from this. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, no, there's no awards. For yeah, there's no. Yeah, yeah, no. We're, yeah. Nobody has any money for this, this is, shit. This is like public radio. It's actually just... worse than that. <laughs> well, radio I think you guys funny. are doing a kick ass job. Um, believe me, I've done a million interviews, and this was very fun. Awesome. We're glad to hear that. Thanks for doing it. Thank you and very much. And I'm very much. proud of you, and send me a good link, all right? I surely will, honey. Thank you very much. And make Stacy show you special head. I surely oh, will. All right, guys. Love you. Love you. Too. Bye. Bye. I really, really wanted to ask her how she got started in comedy. I wanted that to end the show so bad. Oh, oh I know. <laughs> uh, I'm so happy she was uh, able to give us an interview, though. I saved it because she was super cool, and, I, and like she said it like that might like piss her off, so I didn't want to piss her off. <laughs> <laughs>